Hi everyone! Welcome back to Study Hub sa ating mga kaskwela at kalingkod. Kayo po ang Learning Warriors in the New Normal. For today's video, pag-uusapan po natin ano ba yung pwedeng gawing strategy so that we will be able to help students when it comes to their comprehension level or enhance their comprehension level pagdating sa mga word problems sa mathematics. Maaring sabihin natin na okay lang yan, simple calculations, alam mo yung basic operations, alam mo yung formula, kayang isolve yan. Well, hindi po ganun. Ano ba yung pwede mong gawin bilang teacher? Ano ba yung strategy na pwede mong i-apply para higit na maunawaan ng mga bata o mas mapadali yung pag-solve ng mga bata sa word problems? Okay? So, before we continue, please join me in a prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this new day. Lead us always, inspire us, and protect us. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, moving forward, so isa po sa mga strategy na pwedeng gamitin is the close reading strategy. We all know na ginagamit siya sa language, but it can easily be applied also to, I mean, solving word problems in mathematics. And alam na, naman natin na napakahalaga ng connection or integration of subjects, di ba? So, let us continue. Our lesson objective for today is, I will be able to apply comprehension strategies when reading various texts in mathematics. And bakit nga ba napakahalaga ng integration? For sure, my connection po yung language or English subjects to mathematics kasi students who struggles in reading will definitely struggle in word problems. Kung mababa yung comprehension level ng mga bata, definitely mahihirapan sila when it comes to word problems. Okay, so I am referring to the close reading strategy. And Close reading strategy, it is the intentional rereading of a text. It is consists of three levels, yung first read, second read, and third read. Tinatawag din po itong three read strategy. Okay? So, when you introduce this uh, strategy to the students, of course, you will start sa step one. And yan na po yung tinatawag nating first read. Students will simply read the word problem. They will not memorize but we'll try to visualize what they read and try to see what they can remember. So, napaka-importante po ng visualization strategy dito. Okay? So, dito, you can definitely provide a single word problem or yung madali lang na appropriate naman sa grade level na meron ka. Okay? And then, yung, yung word problem na yun, uh, use something na may readability level naman na komportable yung mga bata doon sa sa word problem na ibibigay mo sa klase. Maaring pumili ka ng problem that is easier to an easier one kasi magi start ka pa lang, ba? Yung madaling isolve kasi first attempt mo pa lang. And then just make sure that you have a copy for each student and then introduce the problem and ask students to individually read the problem carefully, okay? And remind them na wag agad isusolve, okay? Or uh, to make any marks on that problem. And then, afterwards, you can ask them, how would you describe the problem in your own words? Okay? So, collect mo yung mga ideas nila. Uh, let them share their ideas with their partner or in group. Okay? So, yan po yung step 1 or yung first read. Also, doon sa first read, after reading and visualization, tell your students to think about some part or details of the story or the word problem that they don't understand, which becomes a question to themselves. And that question will lead them to the second read. Okay? So, yun nga. You ask them to describe their problem in their own words. They share their ideas. So, next step is, have students share their description. They did discuss nyo naman kung merong similarities or differences doon sa mga description na binigay nila. Okay? And then, have your students refer back to the text of this problem. I-discuss mo sa klase or i-discuss ninyo kung yung information nga na yun, matatagpuan nga ba doon sa text. And then, try to work with your students to agree on a general description for what the problem is all about. Okay? And, you can record this general description, pwedeng sa chart or display na mababasa or maiintindihan ng mga bata. It would be easier for them. Uh, maaring poster size siya. And then afterwards, 
you can repeat the procedure until such time na familiar na yung mga bata or easier na for them na gawin yun or medyo proficient na sila, proficient, and after which, that's the time that uh, you can proceed to second read. We come to the second read. So here, they need to read for details. Read again the word problem and try to answer the question you have from first read. Then think, think of a way or predict how you are going to solve the problem. So dito maaari mong gamitin yung cube strategy. Okay? Yung cube strategy, it means circle the numbers, underline the facts, box in the questions or keywords, eliminate some unnecessary information or evaluate, and then solve in check. So dito po sa step 2, again, they need to read for details. Okay, so yung steps na pwede mong i-follow is you can introduce the problem to the class and follow some procedure for summarizing, okay? And pwede ka magkaroon ng uh, math organizer or the close reading math organizer and from there, doon i-record yung summary, ba? And you just need to provide each student with a copy of that organizer na gagamitin nila to complete steps 1 and 2, okay? And then have your students read the problem a second time and identify information in that problem that would be useful to solving the problem. Pwede silang gumamit ng markings such as plus sign, asterisk, okay? And then, next is have students go back to the problem and identify the parts of the problem that do not make sense. Or you can eliminate unnecessary information or things or parts that they do not understand, okay? But, have them record this by using another symbol. Pwedeng underline, di ba? Or symbols na maaaring ginagamit nyo na talaga sa loob ng classroom for other subjects. Uh, kung ano yung komportable at mapapadali sa inyo, okay? And then, have the students share their information with a partner or with the, within the group and also discuss any information that they don't understand. Napakahalaga po niyan, Okay? Lalo na yung mga bagay or information na hindi talaga nila naiintindihan. And then, have your students meet as a class to share the information from that problem that will be useful and not useful when solving the problem. Okay? Ano ba yung mga questions na pwede mong gawing guide? Okay? What, say, for example, what are the patterns or properties and structures in the problem? What do the numbers in the problem represent? Okay? What problem type or structure is this problem or what information is given in the charts or diagram. So, yun po, mga guide question na pwede mong gamitin or ano ba yung relationship between the numbers and the problem. So, those are sample questions, guide question na pwede mong gamitin sa pag-discuss. And also, you can ask questions, uh, I mean other guide questions like what information is missing or what information does not make sense or what words are not understood and then afterwards have the class uh, work together to identify the inf information in the problem that is useful and clarify any questions just be sure to note mathematics vocabulary also in that your students understand the problem and then summarize the two steps uh, you can record on the chart paper along with the general description the helpful information and what are the information being clarified or the information clarifications that were discussed. And you just need to repeat the procedure until students are confident in the two steps of using the closed reading strategies. Afterwards, pwede ka nang magproceed sa step 3 or the third read. Okay, so for the third level or the third read, for the final time, read the word problem, confirm your prediction, and solve. Okay, so we are done with the steps 1 and 2, the first and second read. We are able to, to have our general description, important information, things were clarified already. So, dito naman, step 3 is uh, we are reading to represent or they can draw a picture out of the problem. They need to draw a picture of the problem. So, the first step is introduce a problem to the students and have them complete steps 1 and 2 in, in the organizer. So, have them record their thoughts on that math organizer. Have students share their thoughts with a partner and review them as a class. Okay? And also, 
uh, I mean, afterwards, introduce the third step by drawing a picture of the problem. Okay? Explain to students how they will use the information from steps 1 and 2 to draw a picture to represent the problem. And before drawing an example, have your students think about ways to represent the problem without without numbers. Okay, so finding diagrams or a whole or part part of the diagram, some tables, number lines, etc. And then if needed, uh, you can just provide some manipulatives for students to use and then uh, draw a picture of those materials. So, ano ba yung mga questions na pwede mong gawing guide to help them uh, thinking? Okay, so pwedeng Ano ba yung materials that can be used to help represent the problem? And how could you draw those materials? What operations will be needed to solve the problem? How can those operations be represented with the picture? Okay? And then afterwards, provide time for students to represent the problem. Uh, just give them enough reasonable time. And then have your students share their representations and explain them. So students will be constructing a plan for solving the problem when they explain the representation. And then as a whole group discuss the, var the representations for the problem, have your students relate the visual representation to the words in the problem. Go back to the text. Okay? And then you just need to clarify any misunderstandings kung meron man and support the various strategies and representation. Okay, afterwards, magkaroon kayo ng discussion how the representations help them. Okay, yung representation ba was able to help them develop a strategy para ma-solve yung problema. Okay, and then try to keep several of the representations with the problem on display as an example for, for your students. Okay, and kung kinakailangan, just need to repeat or provide more problems for your students para maging familiar sila os, or maging uh, madali na sa kanila. They will become proficient using the three-level uh, read strategy. The first, second, and third read. Okay? And then afterwards, uh, after the steps one to three to read, uh, they can prepare now to solve the problem. Okay? Okay, so we are done with the first, second, and third read. So definitely, pupunta ka na doon sa solving the problem and checking their works for accuracy. Okay? So, once your students able to complete the steps 1 to 3 in the close reading strategy, just uh, make sure that you will provide the close reading strategy for math organizer. Diba meron tayong organizer? Nagagamitin nila to solve the problem. So, next one is you have to discuss and demonstrate how to use steps 1 to 3 to represent the problem to show a solution, okay? So, depend sa word problem na meron kayo, yung ibang estudyante, they may solve the problem using pictures. So, just uh, encourage them to represent the problem with uh, symbols, with uh, numbers, or drawing, depend sa grade level na meron ka, okay? And then, have your students check to make sure they have paid attention sa units, sa vocabulary, to details like that, the correct numbers and symbols to show how to solve the problem, okay? And of course, the last step is check for accuracy. Check your work. Just have your students go back to the problem and check for accuracy and make sure the solution has correct mathematics, operations, and answer and provide all information that is being asked for in the problem, okay? So, ano naman yung benefits of close reading in math? It gives opportunities for multiple reading and discussions, and it encourages, encourages students to develop deeper understanding of challenging text they are required to read. Okay, so thank you very much for listening, for staying with me until the end of this video. And munting pakiusap lamang po sa mga hindi pa nakakapag-subscribe. You can click like and subscribe button and choose notification bell para updated po kayo sa lahat ng videos. Okay, so thank you very much teachers and sa mga future teachers natin. And bye for now!